Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform for setting up your online presence with tools for marketing, analytics, and even online stores. It can make you sound smart if you say it in front of other people, but that is not how the inverse square law improves your lighting skills. I know, inverse square law, it sounds like an extremely technical and advanced theory, but rest assured, it's really not as unapproachable as it sounds. Although if you do try and look it up, you do tend to run into quite a bit of mumbo jumbo. So that's why I'm going to try and break that down as simply as possible in this video. In lighting, what the inverse square law represents is how the brightness of the light from your light source reduces in brightness as it travels away from the light source. Now, you might want to take a second to process that because it's really important. Let's move on. Now, this reduction in light intensity as it travels over distance is known as fall off. So in other words, fall off refers to the way light gets less bright the further away it is from the source. And the inverse square law is important because the way light falls off is not linear, meaning if I move my subject twice as far away from the light source, it actually doesn't get lit half as bright as it was before. It only gets lit a quarter as bright. There is a calculation formula for the inverse square law. Fortunately, it's not complicated at all. It's one over distance squared, that's it. So let's go ahead and run some quick maths. And for simplicity's sake, let's just use meters as our unit of distance. We'll start with our subject at one meter away from our light source, and that's going to be our reference brightness. We'll go ahead and define that as 100%. And if you run the formula on it, it gives you one over one as well. At two meters away, you get one over two squared, and two squared is four, so that's a quarter, meaning at two meters away, the subject is being lit only a quarter as bright compared to how it was at one meter. And at three meters, if we run one over three squared, we get one over nine. So then the subject at three meters is being lit only a ninth as bright relative to its illumination at one meter. And the calculation goes on and on as the distance increases from the light source. And you might already be wondering, what does this have to do with anything? Now let's go ahead and change all those fractions to percentages and look closely at the percent decrease between each increment. From one meter to two meters, there is a 75% loss of light. But from two to three meters, it's only roughly a 14% decrease. And if we look further away, the light fall off from six to seven meters is only like 0.74%. To visualize, if we plotted a graph of the inverse square law, this is what it would look like. Now, what all that math means is the nearer you are to your light source, the more drastically the light is going to fall off. Now, I know all this doesn't make too much sense right now, but I will be explaining that in more detail with less maths and more how that translates to real world lighting practices. But one does not simply understand the inverse square law without first flexing this glorious knowledge to all your friends. And it's easier to do that if you have a website. If you don't have one yet, you can use my link to get one from Squarespace at a 10% discount. And you can very easily set up your personal portfolio using Squarespace's tools and tell the world about your new understanding of the inverse square law. You do not have to worry about hosting, domain names, or mumbo jumbo like SEO, because all that gets taken care of when you use Squarespace. They've got a very user-friendly website builder that gets you professional looking results quite easily. And they even have e-commerce tools. So beyond just portfolios, you can actually use Squarespace to set up your online store and sell stuff on your website. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash zproductions to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, if we look back at our calculations again, we can see that the differences in brightness is a lot when things are happening near the light source, but as we distance away from the source, the differences are minor. So in real life, as a result of that inverse square law, when I place a subject very near a light source, as I move it back and forth, it results in a big change of brightness because it falls off a lot. But if the subject is at a further distance away, that same degree of movement results in a much smaller degree of change in terms of brightness. And this is the key thing to keep in mind about the inverse square law when it comes to lighting. Near to light source means drastic fall off. It goes from bright to dark really quickly. And far away from light source means things at different distances get lit more evenly because there's less fall off. And here's how that affects the way we light faces. If I have my light right up against my face, it would have fallen off a lot by the time it's reached the other side 
side of my face, meaning one side of my face is very bright and the other side of my face is really dark. I'm not saying that this is wrong because if you're going for a very high contrast look, then this is fine and it achieves just that. But for a slightly more natural look, I'll move the light source further away from my face and this is what that looks like. Here, the light's already traveled some distance before hitting my face. And because of the inverse square law, the fall off from one side of my face to the other is much more gentle. Here's a side by side, light source near my face and light source far away from my face. What you're looking out for is the difference in brightness between the side of my face nearer to the light compared to the side further away from the light. This is important to keep in mind when you're lighting multiple subjects using the same light as well, especially if the light source is off to the side. If you put the light really close, it's going to light the subjects closer to the light much brighter than the one that's further away. So putting the light further away from the subjects, here there's only two subjects, that's going to result in both subjects being lit more evenly. So this is something to keep in mind if you're lighting a group of subjects with artificial lights, for example, lighting a group photo with off-camera flashes. Also, if you have a subject in front of a background, your light being near the subject means it would light up your subject, but fall off drastically before it hits the background. So when you expose for your subject, your background looks dark. So that's one technique to pop your subject out of the background. Now, if we move that light further away, it wouldn't fall off as much between your subject and the background, so your background ends up looking brighter. And one last remark I would like to make before ending this video is the inverse square law is probably the reason behind why sunlight is so hard to replicate artificially. Because the sun is so far away, by the time its light has traveled all that distance to get to Earth, by that time, it has practically no fall off. Something hundreds of kilometers away from you is being lit with the same brightness as you by the same light source. It's possible to recreate the sunlight look with some very powerful lights, but like I said, it's not going to be easy. So that's the inverse square law. Let me know down below if it was remotely comprehensible. And if you have learned something from this video, I would appreciate it if you consider sharing this video with your friends who you think might benefit from it as well. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed today's explanation, do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for more videos just like this. And I will see you in the next video. But until then, here's another video of mine, YouTube things you should watch. Or if you don't like a computer telling you what to watch, here's one of my latest videos.